Here's my story. Just before we traveled to Korea to adopt our son, I sent an email to the clerk of the small Quaker meeting in Seoul to ask about their meeting times. And the clerk wrote back and said that he was meeting us at the airport. For the next 10 days, we spent some part of each day with Kwag Bang Soo. He drove us to the DMZ, to the folk village. We went to the museums. We met his wife and children. We went to dinners together and to Quaker meeting. We had animated discussions about social justice, reunification, and Western imperialism. The night before David and I became parents, we met Bong Su for dinner at the Spinning Restaurant on top of Seoul Tower. And he looked at David, and he looked at me, and he said, point blank, why are you taking a baby away from Korea? And why do you take Korea away from our babies? I didn't know if the revolving restaurant or Bong Su's question made my head spin so violently. But then I realized that his challenge was actually an invitation, not an insult. So I looked at David, and I took a very deep breath, and I said to Bong Su, I promise I will do my very best to answer your question in total honesty, but can you please also do the same for us? Can you tell us more about why you haven't considered adoption? And can you explain why you believe that there are so many Korean children adopted by foreigners? And we proceeded to have one of the most formative comp and complicated conversations of my life. It was not easy. It was full of hard and uncomfortable moments of challenge for all three of us that undermined many of our perceptions about ourselves and each other and our own cultures. And fortunately, it also forged a lifelong friendship between our two households. Afterwards, I realized that it was an inherent part of my responsibility as an adoptive parent in an interracial Korean and American family to accept any invitation, no matter how challenging or uncomfortable, that would help me to better understand my children's experience as Korean-born Americans and as adoptees. This invitation, issued on the eve before motherhood, made it clear to me just how pervasive, how unchallenged, and how oppressive the narratives of white adoptive parents are, and how the stories of white adoptive parents too often drown out adoptee voices and first family voices, and the voices of birth nations and birth communities. I decided to do whatever I could to listen, to learn, and maybe, if and when I was invited, to support adoptees in the Korean community in building a world where the voices and perspectives of Korean adoptees, my children's voices, would be valued and legitimized. I received other transformative invitations over the years. When my five-year-old son invited me to create an adoption class with only adopted people in it, I accepted the challenge, and I extended it to a group of adoptees and adoptive parents, and this invitation grew into All Together Now, and we constructed a space where adopted children define their own experiences and adoptive parents sit and listen and learn from adoptees. And several years after that, Joy Lieberthal asked me to meet her for lunch and invited me to join her in supporting Sejong Camp. And I became a part of uh, Sejong Cultural Education. As a result, I spent each week at a Korean culture camp where I am the only white person and the only adoptive parent. And each summer, I try to sit still and quiet and listen and wait for the campers and the counselors to invite me in to soothe a child who is homesick for an adoptive mother, to offer support to a queer teen coming out to their Korean parents, to help an adopted adult find an effective way to confront their white parents about their experiences of anti-Asian racism. But above all, it means as a white adoptive parent, discerning when I've been invited to listen to stories that are not mine to tell or intrude upon, and when I'm not invited at all, and not only respecting that, but sometimes actively guarding the spaces from others who might intrude. I don't always read the signals as well as I would like. There have been many times when I've gotten excited about a project or a problem and Joy or Ben or others have reminded me with great kindness and patience that I'm a guest in a sacred space that was constructed for others. And as my daughter 
and my son now move into their adolescence and claim this, their own space in the adoptee community and in the Korean community, it's especially important for me to be still and move further back and wait until I'm invited. Remembering that as an invited guest, the stay is always conditional and temporary, and the best guests are the quiet ones who clean up their own messes <laughs> and are sure not to overstay their welcome. Thank you, Korean American Story, for the invitation. <laughs>